This tutorial will introduce you to Quercos Web, a new qualitative analysis tool that works entirely in the browser and aims to be simple and quick to learn. To access it, just visit www.quercos.com forward slash web and you'll be able to log in here. If you haven't created an account, just click on the sign up page here and it will allow you to register for a free trial um, and sign up either for an annual or quarterly subscription. Once you have your account, just log in here with the email address and password that you created. And you'll see any projects that you've used before on Quercos Cloud. You'll also be able to import projects if you've created them offline with Quercos before. And you can also create new projects here. You also have options to see any projects which people have shared with you or to share projects with other people just by clicking on the share button here and then choosing whether you want to allow them just to read, so to view the project or to be able to edit it as well. There are also options here to download the project and to delete them. I'm going to start by creating a new project here by clicking on the new project button and we'll put in a project name which we will call tutorial Now this project has been created, you'll see that the main view in Quercos is split into two parts. On the left side of the screen is what we call the canvas area, which is where we create codes and themes, the bubbles which represent our topics. And on the right side of the screen, this is where our sources of text will be. We've not imported anything yet. We click on the hamburger menu here, we can choose add sources, and then we can either put in a new blank source, which we can edit or paste into, or the import option here. And that allows us to put in um, Word files, PDF files, other text files that we have on our computer. So I'm going to choose the import option here. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to import these projects from one of our example project files, which you can download for yourself. So I'm going to bring in these, they're semi-structured uh, interview transcripts. And we've brought in these three sources here. You'll see there are tabs which run vertically along here which allow us to go between the different sources that we have in the project and a button here which allows us to search for one of the projects or filter the list of projects below by any of the characteristics we have after we've created uh, source properties for them in a minute. So here's one of my sources of text. If we need to edit it, we just click on this button here and choose edit and that allows us to change any typos or change any of the formatting or, or anything else here. When we're happy with the changes we've made, we just click the tick button here. Now in Quercos, there are various ways that you can group, sort and store attributes for the different projects and you access them all with this button here, which allows you to edit the properties in the project and the properties for your particular source. We haven't created any properties yet. It's quite common to use this for demographic characteristics. So for example, we might create one called age and we might have values. So for example, 32, 42, um, and we can add these at any time. So we'll click save to create this new property. We have a property here called age and we can choose that this person here is 42. We can also create other properties here. So let's create another property which we'll call location and we'll say that this person is based in Scotland. We'll click Save. Click to select the location and add that to this particular source. And now we have Scotland as one of the, the location for this source. So we'll click Save. And we've done that for Roger's source here. Now we'll go to Matilda's here, edit the properties. We'll add the age property. Uh, she can be, yeah, 32, that's fine the location, add a new location here, Australia. And click save. And so now we've described the source properties for at least two of the sources in our project. And we can add and edit those at any time with the source properties value here. Now to create codes or themes in the project, all you need to do is right click anywhere in this area here and choose new quirk. The quirks are what we call the codes or themes in Quercos. And this will create a new bubble to represent it. And we're going to call this career. Oops. And we've also got the option here to add in an emoji if, if we like. 
um, and we can enter a description of what we mean by this. Equals working lives and progression. And then we can choose either from one of the preset colors in the palette here, or we can choose uh, any color um, from the color picker that's built into the browser. So we'll click save, and then we've got our bubble called career. Now we can click and drag to move this around the canvas anywhere we like. And we can add text to it. So this says, I don't really know anything about your background and your career. So we'll add this to the career bubble just by dragging and dropping text onto the bubble there. Now that's been added into the career theme. And you'll see that there's a color coded highlight here next to it, which shows us what that code represents. So if we right click that, we can also delete uh, and undo that at any stage. Now we might go through and we might find that we want to create another one. So this person says messy work history. So we can actually drag and drop text straight onto a blank area of the canvas to create a new theme or bubble. We'll call this one messy history. <laughs> I'm not sure if the other people would describe it in the same way. Let's have a winky smiley face for that one. Oh, that'll do fine. Um, particular color or, or any color we want here. And that text has already been added to that. Let's also add this text to the career bubble. So it's kind of also about the person's career as well. And you can see this piece of text has now been assigned to more than one code. There's no limit to the number of codes that one particular piece of text can be added to. So we can keep going on here and add other codes. So this is going to be about, uh, this is about PhD studies. Uh, it's also about um, literature, but I think we just call it English. And by double clicking on any of these bubbles, we'll see all of the text that's been assigned to it from all the different sources. So this is everything which everyone has said about English. It's just this one extract here from Matilda Education. And we can copy this quote here, select the quotes that we want, copy them, and then paste them wherever we're writing up if we need these quotes. It'll also tell us which source that comes from. We can click on that source to go back to that place in the literature. So we may also want to create other subcategories here. So let's create a new one, which is called studies. And another one, which is called masters. And another code called undergrad. Now the studies is going to be my kind of high level code. And these are going to be subcategories. And I'm going to create that just by dragging and drop the bubbles onto each other. So I drop PhD undergraduate, and then masters onto the studies. And these are now subcategories. And we can always just pull these out here by dragging the bubbles back out. There are some other options you'll see by right clicking on the codes. There's a uh, the overview, which we've seen before by double clicking. That shows us all the text that's under there. There's an overlap view, which shows us uh, interactions between different codes. So we've got this one here for family pressure. Have a look at that. Okay, so there's not very much overlapping here, but we can see that family pressure has been coded at the same time as messy history. And um, you get a kind of a pyramid hierarchy here, which shows closer to the top, the more of an overlap there is between those different codes and themes. And this home button here will always take us back to this main view. We've also got an option to merge the codes together here, which is fairly self-explanatory. We just choose something, we can merge English into the um, career perhaps, or, or studies. Um, and then everything which was in that bubble will get added into there. We've also got a delete option here. We want to delete this English bubble. So now what I'm going to do is open another project where a lot more coding has been done. And I'll show you some of the ways which we can examine the project once we've done a little bit more work. So I'm just going to click here. Everything is saved as you go along. So there's no need to click save and go to projects. And that'll go back to my list of projects here. And I've got this project here, which is using the same data. Um, but it's just been a lot more coded. Um, so you can see here we've got sub subcategories here, lots of different um, <laughs> ways to group the, the text. And a lot more coding has been done across a lot of sources. You can see all the different highlights being represented here. Let's um, see some of the ways that we can use the source properties to run filters and queries on this data. We'll click here on the filter button uh, and then choose add filter. And we can filter by so many different things which are in the project. So the author, who did the work in a particular project, uh, who created a code or uh, when a particular highlight was added, um, 
we can look at those groups, we can look at the name of the sources. Uh, we can also do a text search for particular keywords through there. Uh, but we can also choose things like the location. So for example, this is one of the source properties. We describe the location of all our sources. And if we choose Australia here, apply the filter, we'll see results which just come from the people who say that they are from Australia. So that was Matilda in this project. And anyone else? And Bruce. Okay, so two people here uh, which came from that. So these are all the results uh, for vulnerabilities code or for the memo code here. And again, we can tick to select uh, one or more of these and copy these quotes into um, the clipboard to paste somewhere else. But we can also add other criteria. So we might want to see um, people in Australia who did health. And then that will narrow the search down to um, just that subgroup. I think it's probably now just Matilda. Yep, yeah, that's right. So um, now we're just seeing the results uh, from people who are in Australia whose discipline was also health. Um, we can also split the screen here. So I'm actually going to remove that um, health discipline there. Um, and then I'm going to split the screen so we can run two queries at once. So on the left, we have location equals Australia. But let's have another query, which is location equals Scotland. And now we can see side by side. Um, on the left, this is everything that people have said from the people who are based in Australia. And this is everything that people said in Scotland. We can see there might be some differences in how things have been coded to the different themes here. So again, I'm going to click the home button to go back to the main view. Now we've got lots of codes and themes here. It might be useful to uh, arrange them. Uh, we can drag and drop and move them around the canvas, uh, but with the view button here, we can change to uh, a list view, which gives us a kind of a long hierarchical list, which we can scroll up and down like this. We can also rearrange things here and code onto this view in exactly the same way as we would with any of the other projects. We've also got uh, arranged canvas views here. So this puts everything into alphabetical um, order or um, descending or descending or uh, by date that it was created. And we can always go back to this canvas view here and you can um, just click and drag the canvas to move around, use your mouse wheel to, to scroll in and out. And now the search is being particularly useful. So if we're looking for voice, uh, we're trying to find a particular code so we can code to it. You'll also see there's a chat functionality here. So if you're working with lots of um, other people, um, you can say, You can um, leave comments. You can also use this even if you're not working with other people just to show um, your own thought processes. But there are other ways that you can um, annotate as well. The memos is one example of this. Uh, click and drag to add some text onto a memo column here. So we'll double click in here. We'll call this uh, introductions. Interest. Oops. Interesting see how this will go. So that's the comment, it's by me, and now it's saved there. So we can click to, to see that, and we can add memos. They're always assigned to a particular piece of text, so they'll follow you as you go through the project. There are also other options here in the settings. So for example, here we can change whether we show the numbers which appear uh, of how many highlights have been put into each code, uh, the size of the, the text, um, and also we can change the, the width of the columns and the, the memos, we're using those a lot. If we want to generate uh, views which represent the overlap and hierarchy views, we can do those here as well. We'll just click Save. And now you can see that those changes have been altered. We've changed the size of the text and size of these elements a little bit. Um, and now we've got the, we can see the number of codings with each of these. Now, if we double click on vulnerabilities now, we'll see the whole, all these subcategories under here, and we can click to choose just one of these. So if we just want to see everything which is in denial, that shows us everything in that particular code. So that's a quick guide to Quercos Web. There's lots more features and functionality that will be added over the course of the year. So keep checking back. There's nothing you need to update. And the great thing about Quercos Web is it can work either with the old version of Quercos, which you install on your computer, or with, on any device that you have around, including uh, mobile, um, tablets, uh, Chrome iOS, any operating system in any browser. So it makes it much more accessible for people um, and you can collaborate with anyone working on Quercos projects across the world. So thanks for coming along. Do sign up for the free trial and give Quercos a try for your qualitative analysis.